what I got going on today. Last night, I baked a bunch of the dessert pieces for the rainbow dessert animals I'm planning on working on. Cute little star macarons, cake slices, little rainbowy fudge, just lollipops, cute little things. And so I have to make all the bases of the animals that these are going to sit on. So here's the narwhals I've started that will have some of those rainbow desserts on them. I have a purple, a pink, and a yellow. And I'm thinking that they'll have rainbow narwhal horns, which I'll add on later. And then I'm also going to do some dessert turtles, so I'll show you those too. So I'm kind of thinking I might do some turtles that have each of their fins in a different rainbow color. I just would have to figure out what color shell could go with this because they have like six limbs so I've already used up all the rainbow. I'm kind of like, hmm, I could do like this off purpley pink color as the shell. Or maybe I could do like a sparkly white. I do want white frosting on these rainbow turtles though so I'll have to experiment with what would look best for their shell. turtles are looking. This is how I usually would do a dessert turtle. I might do some fun colors like he's got a purple tummy, pink shell, yellow face, but I decided I'd try some other ones. So this is the one that is all multicolored and I kind of gave him a purpley pink shell which I don't think is ideal. I think white would have looked better but then it would have been a white on white situation once I add frosting a dessert so I opted for the purple. Here's the purple tum too. And then I did just this rainbow shell one, which I really like. I'm almost tempted to not put desserts on him, but I always can make another one if I just wanted one plain. But yeah, those are them. They're looking cute and they'll get desserts eventually too. So this is the disaster point my workspace gets to when I'm halfway through a collection. And this is after I cleaned it a little. <laughs> So today, I've spent an embarrassing amount of time working on these little rainbow cookies, like I can't even tell you how much, and I'm not sure if I even like them, but I'm going to bake them and see how they look. So we'll see. And also today, I've been working on getting the blush and highlight onto all these critters I've sculpted over the past few days and they're ready to get baked in the oven so that's one of my next steps. desserts like I need to cut down the sticks on the lollipops and basically clean all of them with acetone so that they can go on the critters. So that's my next activity of the day. Saturday and here's what we got going on today. 
I have a shop update this afternoon. But this morning before the shop restock, I'm going to work on more of these little ice creams I started last night. Because I want to put them on my rainbow dessert animals. And I think they'll be really cute. So when I'm making these, I'm kind of smushing little cut-off pieces of different rainbow colors together. And then I'll sort of make that into a ball. Then I'll sort of choose my favorite like side of it that I want to be on top. It's not like that important. And I'll cut the other little end off. So like same with this little one. And I want them to be kind of flat at the end, not too round. Because if they're too round, they'll end up looking kind of comical. So I'm gonna like make them look like that, which like it doesn't look like ice cream at all right now. And that's okay, but I'm gonna like poke out the edge. And then I can go in and define it a little bit more. Obviously, like, this get dust on them constantly. It doesn't matter what it is. They're going to have dust. I'm kind of going and do that. And then for, like, the main part of the ice cream, I'll take a little scrap of sandpaper and give it some texture. And then I'll go around the edge color by color and kind of like use a toothpick to kick up the edges because you know when you see pictures of ice cream they have like really fluffy edges and obviously like when you scoop ice cream yourself it doesn't always look like that unless you're super good at scooping it but in pictures it has like the fluffy edges and so that's what I think people think of so that's what I go for because we kind of you know go for ideal food if you're going to be making it tiny why not make it like tiny and kind of perfect I don't know I just like things to be like cute and pretty. But yeah, I'll go around all the edges of these new ones, but this is what they look like kind of once they're all done up. After I'm done with them, I'll go in and add like liquid clay to be like whipped cream and then I'll add like little mini sprinkles on so they'll be extra extra cute. <laughs> pretty cute and I did them a little bit pastel hopefully to go with these cookies that I said I wasn't super duper happy with yesterday I think that they match pretty well they're pretty cute and I'm hopeful that the lighter ice cream not only makes sense for ice cream but it'll sort of balance the difference between the brighter fudgy bits and macarons and stuff in the sort of paler cookies like I like the combo better already so I'm thinking I like that. Maybe you can't even tell the difference in the color tone between the tiny fudge and the tiny cookies, but I'm just like that. I always want everything to be perfect. So I thought I'd show you guys some of the screen printing testing I've been doing. So I opted to go for like the heat transfer vinyl method of screen printing just because doing emulsion seemed like something I didn't have the setup for in my apartment. And I have been just doing all my tests on like scrap fabric 
So like some of them turned out really bad. Some of them kind of just have a lot of texture, like that one has a lot of texture. Some of this just looks thick. And as I did it more, I kind of got better and better results. So like these ones look pretty good. Keeping in mind that the fabric I've used here is like super cheap dollar a yard fabric that the fabric stores don't really want I think but I use it for like toils and for my plush animals and then also for screen print testing and you know these ones are looking pretty good especially being on like not the nicest fabric but it's like definitely a learning curve and process learning how to screen print it's a big project and I'm kind of like what am I gonna do with all this wasted fabric I don't know. Maybe I'll make stuffed animal toils out of it, but then again, there's a bunch of ink on it, so that might mess up the stuffed animal mock-ups. Not sure, but I think it's better than, like, doing my testing on t-shirts and wasting actual t-shirts. So I think this is the best option. I was going to show you this sweater again, but somebody has decided that she needs to sleep on it. So cute. So sweet. I love her. So here's where I'm at for my star sprinkles so far. Just my thumb for scale. They're itty bitty. And I'm also going to do green, blue, and purple so that I can have the whole rainbow. Those right now are in my freezer so that they keep their shape until I cut and shape them. So I'm going to start in on the green next. I always have to do things in rainbow order. It just is how it is. Alright, so here's the green one. I just got it out of the freezer. I just squeeze these through a piping tip, like what you use for frosting, and that's how I get them into the star shape. I just use like a five starred star shape piping tip, and then I just cut them with an X-Acto blade. Honestly, like, it'd probably be even better if I could like put a new sharper one on, but like, how many X-Acto blades is a girl going to go through, you know? And I kind of like twist it as I go because inevitably whichever one's on bottom is going to get just like a little bit smushed. So on top of like twisting it as I go, I go in with a tool after and I fix every single one so that every single sprinkle is like as close to perfect as I can get it. But I always chop all of them first because like it's going to start defrosting. In fact, it already has started defrosting. And the more frozen it is when you do it, the better it is. It's just like crazy how long it can take to do something like making sprinkles. I think I just give myself too many tasks to do in a day. But it's easy to just, when you're making miniatures, it's easy to like spend a full working day just making like sprinkles for a collection oh but like it's the little details like star sprinkles that like make a piece special you know so see how two of the edges just aren't perfect because they get smushed while cutting I just take one of these like little nail dotting tools that I've, you know, they're for nail art, but I've been using them for clay for years. And I just go in and like resharpen up and fix the corners so that it actually looks like an actual star. And obviously, like, it's still not perfect, but it is better. And then I'll bake it like that. Yeah, they're so tiny and cute. Alright, so the star sprinkles are finally done being sculpted. It's now almost 7 p.m. I have been doing them all day. But it's okay, because I think they're going to be cute. I'm excited. Alright, so this isn't exactly craft related, but I wanted to show it anyway because, I don't know, I think it'll be interesting. So one issue I have is that I love having my nails done, 
but the clay eats away at my polish and it wears down over time. I'm one of those people that can't keep their hands still, so like waiting for the nail polish to dry is like a task for me. So I thought, okay, if I get something with a gel lamp, then the gel lamp can cure the polish and I won't be like sitting around at the end of the night trying to let my nails dry. So I bought a gel nail kit and I'm gonna try it out. So I thought I'd unbox it. Instruction manuals. It looks like it comes with a variety of little tools. I don't know how many of those I'll, I'll use because I actually already have tools. Okay, this must be like either polish or base and top coat. Okay, that's base and top coat. Very cute. Right, and here's the lamp itself. I got an LED one because apparently it's supposed to be less damaging to your skin. So there he is. Quartz for. Right, that's cuticle oil. I'm not really a cuticle oil user, but I probably should be. Assume this is polish. Let's see if I can't get this open. Yeah, this is polish. So I opted for pastels because I figured pastels will go best for my critters when I'm taking photos or just filming them. And obviously, like, once it comes to fall, I'll need fall colors, but I figured let's not get fall colors in spring. What if I end up hating gel polish? So I figured I'd try it out starting with the rainbow because the rainbow is, like, my personal fave, and then I'd go from there. Yeah, I'm excited to try it out and see how it goes. They're super cute and tiny. Oh, that's very pretty. They're not packed in rainbow order though. Y'all know that is one of my pet peeves. I want things as close to rainbow order as humanly possible. I guess they have them in number order, but like, is that as good as rainbow order? Probably not. Yeah, I'm gonna try that out and I'll have to keep y'all updated on how long lasting it is. See how it compares to normal polish.
much for watching what I got up to this week in the studio. I hope you enjoyed. And kind of a anticlactic week. All I've done is a little bit of sculpting, working on my rainbow critters, and getting things ready. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed what I got up to in the studio this week, and I'll see you next time. Bye!